face is the extinction of our native Hawaiian language. Um, as the time goes by, a language is lost every two weeks, making it easier to find its way here soon if we are able to do something about it. We suggest that we seek out community contacts for Kokua and provide effective solutions for our Lohui to keep our language alive. Um, this unspoken problem has been going on ever since Hawaii was taken over by the U.S. Being a part of the Hawaiian community, not knowing your own language, is a disconnection from your culture. More and more people are being drawn away from who they are and where they came from. Our language allows us to stay connected with Pupuna and Akua knowledge. Hawaiian language fosters many connections and attaches us to culture, beliefs, past understandings, and group identities. In 1906, the U.S. had the goal of Americanizing our culture and stripping us away from our language. When this did happen, schools would be instructed American history and was only allowed to speak English. This is only one of the things that had occurred that caused this problem to exceed in a higher difficulty of solving. We plan on focusing our goal here on the Big Island and the duration of this depends on the learning abilities of the people who actually want to contribute and participate. The way we will be promoting our mission is through social media platforms like Instagram and Snapchat, et cetera, and virtual connections, for example, like um, um, virtual workshops with special guests, including um, maybe some of our teachers here on campus. Some of the challenges that we might face is educating all and also filling the needs of everyone. Um, we wanna accomplish the reconnection of our Hawaiian language with the Hawaiian people. And the way we'll be funding this is fundraising. We connected our project to Hiaka for not only the representation of the group, but what we're trying to get at. And this is because her characteristics included succession, regeneration, and growth. In conclusion, we believe that taking a step of faith and putting in the hard work can help us one day accomplish our mission. We shall never give up on being known to who we are and the language that attaches us to that. If we continue this disconnection, it'll soon feel like an all year round fall. The leaves that were once atop of the tree will drop down, cold and shriveled, disconnected and unchanging. It will remain on the ground until someone or something decides to pick it up and regrow a bigger tree. Great and numerous is the knowledge of the Hawaiians. Mahalo. Is there any questions? Okay. Um, as you guys create your three to one feedback, um, I'm going to be asking them questions. First of all, where did you guys get this background for your slides? Um, we made it ourselves. You made it? Yes. It's very nice. It's very professionally done. Can you go to that first, your opening slide? Yeah, look at that. That's beautiful. Very cool. All right. And then can you guys talk a little bit more about why um, your big why, as far as just on a personal level, on, on an individual level, why you chose um, Olelo Hawaii um, for your project? Um, we chose Olelo Hawaii because um, growing up, we always, we were um, provided with the knowledge and ike from our kupuna being raised in that um, Hawaiian language and knowing how um, important it is to stay connected to our aina and to our lahui and um, seeing how um, I guess more and more people are being detached from who they are um, is really heartbreaking so we wanted to make that the main reason of why we're here today and why we want to um, help. Okay. Malia, you? Um, for me, it's because, like, I feel like whenever, when we grew up, like she was saying, we were taught so many things, but not Hawaiian as much as we should be. And Hawaiian speaking is like the first step of grabbing that knowledge and actually being able to know 
the meaning of it. So it's really important for other people and new generation speakers to also learn. Right. Um, and I'm sure everybody is aware that, um, you know, Kamehameha III, Kaui Keauli, right, declared that his nation is going to be a nation of literacy, right, of the educated. Um, you guys come from generations of literacy, right? So when you guys think school is tough, please know that you guys have you guys have it in you. It's in your history, right? For you guys to be literate. Um, sometimes it's going to be hard to learn Hawaiian just because of how our brain has been trained to, you know, learn English and the grammar rules for that, right? But I encourage each and every one of you guys to continue to learn how to speak Hawaiian. I mean, it's so maika'i that um, KS has finally made it mandatory for their students to take at least two years of Hawaiian or at least have some kind of proficiency before graduating our school. Yeah. Um, also, yeah, that, there's that. Okay. Um, anybody want to say anything before we move on? Most excellent job, you two. Um, do you guys have enough time to do your three to one? Yeah. Everybody should be typing. Kaike, you got it. Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. Congratulations, you two. Well done. Yay. Oh, yes. We're going to, what do you guys do in your other classes when you clap? Do you clap? Really? Or do you like, what do you guys do? Spear fingers? I don't know. I, oh, shoot. Kaike. All right. We do some kind of like Maori. Okay. All right. So, okay. Who's next? All right. Go for it. Um, I just have a question. Hey. How do you share it without showing the, the notes Malia could you um so you just you just do present and then at the bottom there's like q a notes and all those different options okay thank you you might have to press notes like two times though because sometimes it doesn't show up right away okay like that and then at the bottom the bar at the bottom. Okay, and then you can't see it. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you learned something new today, huh? Yep. Yeah, me too. All right. Okay. Um, aloha my kako. Our group is Kupa'a Kaiaulu. Um, I'm Tehani. My group members are Kaike and Lale. Um, so, um, he alika aina he kawa ke kanaka. Land is chief, man is servant. As Hawaiians, we have an essential responsibility to malama aina. Our ancestors brought forth the perspective of giving back to the land because we depend so greatly on it. Kaike. Sorry. Uh, our purpose. Um, our purpose is to target ocean pollution and waste related issues to ensure a better future for our lahui. Um, microplastics end up in marine life food chains and eventually makes it way, it, its way to people through seafood consumption. Marine life affected by ocean pollution um, through diseases, suffocation, and many other issues. Um, our purpose is or our main goal is to spread awareness through social media, um, form stronger connections to the Aina and create a sturdier bond between us and our wine culture. Lele. By rising up to tackle the issue of ocean pollution, we are preserving our beautiful oceans for the future generations to come. This connects to the Hawaiian God of the ocean sailing and voyaging Kanaloa. Kanaloa will help us navigate along the journey of preventing ocean pollution and sustaining Hawaii's oceans. As we sail through this expedition of hardships and obstacles, Kanaloa's ocean currents will guide us on our way towards a brighter and cleaner future. That being said, we must now take the proper steps to ensure that future. 
This issue can be combated with traditional methods such as ceremonies, taking care of both the land and the sea and living off the land in a sense where you only take what you need. Along with these traditional methods comes contemporary ones, such as using social media to spread awareness, as well as utilizing technology and modern mach machinery to reach our goals. Combine these tactics can do great things. Um, why is it a problem? Our shorelines catch debris from all over the world. Trash in the ocean comes from all manufactured products, but mostly plastics. Littering, storm winds, and poor waste management are all contributions to ocean pollution. Plastic waste is the most concerning pollutant because it is extremely long lasting. Marine pollution affects marine animals, food, and health. Sea animals suffer indigestion, suffocation, and entanglement. It also causes starvation and plastic buildup in their bodies. Our health is put in danger because microplastics get into the water we drink and the salt we use. It can cause the development of reproductive, neurological, and immune disorders of both humans and wildlife. Ocean pollution causes numerous dangers and hazards for both humans and animals. So with that being said, our um, project, which is our awareness team, Kupa'a Kayolu, um, our, our main goal is to teach and influence um, our community here in Hawaii. Um, and we plan to hold monthly events um, that include land and community service um, and innovation workshops that include um, art workshops with recyclable products or um, creating um, little activities for our keiki to do. Um, anything that involves coming together and um, working around preventing ocean pollution. And um, our first project will be at Camilo Beach. We want to conduct a beach cleanup. Um, we're planning that it will take place um, in a weekend in March and the requirements for our group will just to um, bring at least three Ohana members or friends each. So that'd be about like nine people that are um, helping us. And we plan to eventually um, expand our group, um, starting with Ohana and friends and then expanding to the rest of our community and then the whole island and so forth. Um, possible challenges that we may encounter include COVID precautions and that will affect including and recruiting members of our team. Um, but accomplishments that we hope to reach are to teach and influence our Hawaiian community and perpetuate our aina for the future generations to come. And as for fundraising, um, not much will be needed, not much needs money, but um, if ever we need fun, if ever we need to fundraise, we'll hold um, uh, car washes, et cetera, or um, donations, or we could also do like sustainable shopping online. Oh. Okay. Uh, being involved in such an influential movement encourages us to prepare for the future, as we are the latest of all Hawaiian generations. As we follow carefully in our kupuna's footsteps, we acquire more knowledge and connection to the aina as we get closer to our goal. We care so deeply about our beloved Hawaii and it is our kuleana to treat it the way it deserves to be treated. We will forever be indebted to our land, our oceans and everything it provides for us. Kupa'a Kaiulu will strengthen our ability and willingness to be servants of the land as well as unite us with our lahui. Let us rise up and hold ourselves accountable for presenting our aina and kai for the future of Hawaii. Mahalo. And this is our resources. All right, well done. Um, just as a heads up, when, when you guys present your, um, your research findings and things like that, um, I wanna hear you guys say like, um, in referencing the article, blah, 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 right? Or according to this, right? And because you guys have your sustainable coastlines resources, you know, um, all of your, your research here, but when you present, right? To, to bring more credibility, right? Um, mm -hmm. that, 
needs to be said so that you can you can make sure you anchor your credibility and say we did the work um please join us right so okay yeah but that's just a, a real quick like um feedback so a couple questions um what was your idea for bringing in at least three Ohana members? Can you talk more about that? Because that's um, a great idea, right? With the COVID yeah, right? and the so, bubbles. Yeah, yeah. I was, I mean, we talked about it a little bit and we were like wondering um, how many people would be allowed to like attend these workshops every month, especially because of COVID. And I thought about... Um, it would the best thing right now would be um, as for safety would be like 10 or less people and since there's three of us and if we bring like three people each it'll just be nine or or like one more person but yeah just to be safe cool um, my question my next question is for Lele so Lele um, what is your personal um, investment in this in this topic of of malama aina like how do i relate to it yeah like what why why does this drive you to want to do this um i think everyone should feel the need to take care of our land and you know especially us living on an island that we like with limited resources and nothing's like infinite so i think that's really the big idea that we have to take care of it because it's all we have so for me, that's my personal opinion about it. Well articulated, that was that was a, a definite money answer right there. Awesome. And then Kaike, what do you, um, when you go to the beach or to the coastline, what are some of the things you do on a personal level that, that demonstrate your, your love for the land? Well, I think, just being there and taking care, you know, like specifically what I would do. Mm -hmm. Well, usually when you go to a place, you would start off with, um, on one of our slides, we said ceremonies. And if we're going to a certain place, we would start off with an Oli, um, you know, just to welcome us in. And then an Oli coming out, you know, as we leave the place, just saying thank you and, you know, right ask for permission mahalo the place right but also like on a um more more pri pragmatic level pragmatic meaning you know practical level like when you go to the shoreline or to the beach what do you do that says you 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 mahalo and you aloha the place that you went to like do you pick up trash do you Oh yeah. yeah. Well, that that's the that's kind of the whole group's project. We're we're here to malama the aina and you know pick up trash, clean up whatever isn't naturally there. Oh you. yes, isn't naturally there, right? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Cool. I I'm just um trying to trying to get a feel for on a personal level, right? What what is your where is this commitment coming from? Yeah. So Tehani, go ahead and talk a little bit about it. Um, sorry. Okay, so um, I've my kula ivi is pohoiki, and that's I I grew up there, and I always felt like an obligation to take care of that place because it was like it was like mine. But then um, around like eighth grade, I went on this um, this science camping trip with Dr. E, and it was about we were learning about fish ponds, but every time we got the chance to go to the beach, we would all just like pick up as much trash as we could and invest ourselves. Like it took up to like hours. We were just like observing like the beauty of the beach, like living organisms and, and stuff like that. And it, we were like fascinated by it. And then that changed my perspective into like, I can't just be taking care of one place because it's important to me. I have to be taking care of are all beaches on our island or in Hawaii because the future depends on it. Right, right. Um, 
Very cool. Thank you guys for sharing. Did everybody have enough time to create their three to one feedback? Yeah. So we are, um, I think you guys are kind of getting the feel for maybe what what would happen after you present yeah a proposal is that there's other clarifying questions that maybe the board would ask right um and some of it will be related to like your own personal connection to the why right and so you guys are answering these questions at a really high level as far as like being able to think on your feet yeah um and being able to talk about um, your convictions in a really genuine and authentic way. Okay. Um, for some of you guys, this might be your life's work. Okay. And so I'm hoping that you guys are getting something out of this. Okay. Um, before um, we move on, um, this last reference page. Um, can you just double check it and then move things in alphabetical order? Okay. okay. Thank you guys so much for your presentation. All right. Who is next? Last but not least, I would think. Huh? And uh, mahalo for dressing up today. You guys look really good. Yeah. Yes, I saw. I saw. I saw. Yes, we have. We have other groups that made that coordinated outfits. So mahalo for that. Okay. Are we ready? And thank you for not standing up while presenting because we don't want to see sweatpants. So like, um, you guys can't see them out. <laughs> like this, like no, this off, I don't know what happened. Okay. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so this is Kekamakani Oko Wokyo. Kukua in a Ulula out on the Kahokai by Shining Kulu Hino Sama and Ulkia Mine. So, um, you've probably seen things like cigarettes. Stop that. in the name of love oh. before you break <laughs> my heart. Malia, what do they need to do in order? Because we're seeing their notes. And not uh, their well, slides. I thought you were seeing their notes. Uh, well, I thought they were going to pop up or something. There, how's that? Yeah, that's funny. Now, screen, uh, shared her notes instead of the presentation because the notes in the presentation have a two separate um, page. And, and you go. can't full screen the notes because then it'll show that one. So you just have to keep oh. it as like, as like a smaller tab. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay, wait, let me stop the time and reset. Okay, can we do it again? Yeah. Can we hana hold this bugger? Okay, ready? Go. Kikamakani o ko uo keo, kukua ena ulula ao a me kai, by shining kulua hine samo and uo keo mami. So you've probably seen things like cigarettes, shopping bags, soda cans, band-aids, and debris sprawled on the shore on your visits to the beach. If someone were to throw an empty bag of chips in the water, you know it would hurt the ecosystem. But what many people don't know is that it also hurts the sacred value of the land and even the human community itself. And not only can it spread to other places around the world, but it's hard to take back with all the increasing amount of trash. Um, this is why Kekamakani Oku Uwakea is devoted to helping the already established many companies to get more attention and more help. We plan to create social media platforms to spread knowledge and awareness of other nonprofit organizations that are devoted to cleaning beaches and even forests. So um, hospitals have actually been known, um, in order to understand the problem, we must learn the many sources of the problem. So hospitals have actually been known to throw their used medical supplies on beaches like used needles. And um, of course there's always been debris and junk 
as you can see all over the beaches. And with the pandemic and use of more disposable products like gloves and masks, um, people find themselves easier to litter the products. And there's even careless littering such as trash falling out of your bag or your truck without you even noticing. And it would, it's already super hard to stop anyone from littering in the first place. And so we're just gonna let the efforts continue to do that and we'll try to fix the outcome. Um, we can always, um, of course, always turn back to Ike Kupuna as our ancestors were able to keep sustainable environment for really long. And for them, it was common knowledge that you give back to the Aina. It wasn't just a sign that you see while visiting the beach to throw your litter in this trash box or whatever. It was just a norm. And we also make a connection of, to Kanaloa, the Hawaiian god of the ocean, um, because many of the trash on beaches obviously come from or go into the ocean. And we think because of that, it's important to include him in our minds as well as in this project. Our idea was to express ourselves through social media, such as Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and progress off of that. Uh, then after getting enough attention, we plan to start throwing out facts, dates, and times, and places. Um, every month, we plan to do at least one or two trash cleanups on beaches and in forests. The way we were thinking of coming up with the money was by starting up community fairs and concerts and charging vendors a fee to set up a booth such as the Ku'u Coffee Fair and the Farmer's Markets. Um, the reason we want to work on this issue is to connect our communities through a common problem and fix the problem for the betterment of the Aina. Um, by solving these problems together, we plan to see a healthy change in our communities and hope our communities stick together and help each other in many ways. Um, the long-term goal is for our communities to band together and thrive by helping the Aina help us. The other thing we hope to see is our keiki thrive in our communities and learn from the Aina. And these are our references. All righty, thank you very much. So we've had two um, two groups talk about taking care of the ocean, right? And so what makes your guys' um, grassroots project a little bit different from the previous group's project? Um, I guess uh, we want to focus on oceans and forests and and um, we know that if you clean up one spot the uh, the wind and the rain can wash other trash from other areas down to the same spot you just clean okay very good what we do on the land we do to the ocean all right, um, let's see, what else? Um, well, okay, can you talk more about this um, issue of the medical supplies? Yeah, of course. Um, so it's actually so horrible. Um, there's, you know, the needles that the, I interviewed my grandparents and they talked about um, hearing news of them just being left around. And like, we obviously know that it hurts the environment, but it can also, if you don't care about the environment, it also hurts yourselves too. Cause the keiki, um, this is an Oahu mark. Um, mm -hmm. keiki, um, like could step on them and stuff. And then that wouldn't be good cause they're used needles too. And like, also the pandemic stuff. I mean, and yeah, the pandemic stuff is better question. Yeah. Okay. And then um, can you guys talk about what makes your grassroots project um, more innovative than um, the other 
projects done in the past as far as with the beach cleanup and taking care of the Aina as well? Um, well, we're kind of, because we know if we were to actually do this, um, we are actually doing this, <laughs> but um, we want it to be more like realistic, something that we can be able to reach as soon as possible. So like, um, as you can, could see, we're kind of focusing on promoting other already made groups and spreading their information or like partnering with them. And then um, like we wouldn't, it's just, yeah, more realistic and rational. Okay, very good. Cool, congratulations, we are done. So let's go ahead and get into that feedback um, discussion board. Okay, and then I want you guys to really focus on your, your reflection for um, the project. So as you guys finish up with the three to one feedback, we also have your individual ref reflection, All right? So the first question is what went well? It takes some time to talk about what went well. Okay, so you're just typing in. Um, what went well? Were you guys good teammates? Was it easy to get along and complete tasks? Um, were you guys able to divide and conquer and keep each other accountable? Okay. Did you guys all fulfill your roles? Okay, so just from, just speaking from group group dynamics, okay. what went well? The next question is what could be improved? So when you think about the things that you guys did, I'm sure there's things that you would want to do better at. So for example, like I'm really trying to get you guys to be both Na'al driven, but also um, driven through facts as well, right? So there needs to be this balance of this spiritual and deep-seated conviction in the why, but also, right, what are the, the facts and statistics that um, make it clear that these are the things that we need to do, right? So that would be from, from like a blanket statement for me to you guys. Um, I would like to see more of that, yeah? Can you guys use the facts, scientific data, as well as um, Ike Kupuna to really feed your convictions? Yeah. So what else could be improved on? Um, I think the time was pretty good. You guys did a pretty good job managing the time. Okay, so there's that. Ankumo? Yes? How long was this presentation supposed to be? I three, three minutes plus or minus 30 seconds. It's just around there. So we all did around like three minutes, 30 seconds. -ish. Oh, okay. Yeah, no big deal. And you know, honestly, um, the time limit is there as like a a guide, right? If, if I notice that my students are, do you hear my dog? We have a loose dog in our neighborhood and it's triggering all the other dogs. Anyway, um, if I notice that kids um, or during the presentation, if it's going longer and they have, you know, substantial information, then that's a little bit different, right? That means that I needed to adjust the time. But for you guys, you guys did a great job managing your time. 
and then presenting all the information that was needed. Again, going back to, would I like to see more statistics? Absolutely, right? Like, I want to hear that. In 1998, blah, 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 right? Or there was a law passed in this blah, 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 right? About, what is it? The plastic bag ban, right? How we had to bring start bringing in our, our bags into the grocery stores, right? That would have been a really, a really um, solid example of how things can be changed through laws in order to clean up our oceans, things like that, right? Would you guys, could you guys think outside the box and also promote more like things on a government level, like advocating for certain laws, right? To ban further things like, you know, like the styrofoam containers, right? They work really well with containing the oil from, you know, the short ribs and the sweet and sour pork short ribs or whatever, in comparison to those pla those paper <laughs> containers that we now have, right? And all the rice gets stuck to the bottom, right? So we really got to make those sacrifices. Are we okay with the oil spilling all over the place and leaking through those plastic food containers, right? In comparison to years and years of styrofoam containers in our landfill. I think so. I think we can do that. Oh, what else? Let's move on to the next part. And this is most meaningful for me. And that is the third question. What was helpful, helpful from this project? Like, you know, the, where the planning, was the planning document really helpful? Did that keep everybody on track? Okay. From a teacher standpoint, I thought it it allowed for some healthy pressure, peer pressure as far as like, oh gosh, they can see I didn't pull my own weight in the canoe, I better do it, right? Um, and then I'm hoping that the roles and then the next steps were really helpful in moving this project forward. Um, and then the last part is really important because if I were to do this again for like next year's students or even like a, a different type of project, what other supports would you need, right? And this is important because for me, like how I ask you to be the very best student that you can be, I also need to ask myself, how can I be the very best teacher for you guys? So I'm going to take into consideration your guys' feedback for this project as well, okay? And it, it really means a lot to me. Okay, so take your time to write some things in there. Okay. Like, do we need more practice on how to join Ike Kupuna with something that's happening in the present to create something innovative for you guys? Do we need to practice those things? The what ifs, right? That thought process of iterating ideas. I don't know. I don't know if you need that or not. So you need to let me know. Were you able to use, um, to uniquely use your strengths to help contribute to the project? Okay. I hope so. So one cool thing about this was the transference from Hawaiian culture, Kumuhaya's class to this class. So Malay and McKenna talked about um, the article from Keanu Sai um, and how they learned about it in Kumuhaya's class and how given the chance they would have, they created a, an Olelo Hawaii driven um, grassroots partnership project. And I thought that was an incredible thing to do. Okay, so whenever you guys wanna transfer, like, you know, when you guys learn something in biology and there is some kind of connection to what we're reading on like a thematic level or just something you wanna add in, um, do it, 
okay? These classes that you're taking should flow together, right? In the big, like, in the big plan of everything, right? So anyway, are we good? Can we move on? Okay. So um, let's go ahead and I'm going to share my screen with you so that we can move on. Do you have your planners? I need you guys to go grab your planners and your notebook because we're going to move on to Antigone now. So in your planner, I want you guys to go ahead and find today's date, February 1st. Okay, okay you good? Okay, got your planners. We're gonna write this stuff down. I need you to read up to line 330 for this week. Okay, and then also go ahead and visit February 2nd and write down IXL. Everybody clear, IXL is due during cohort B, right? I'm gonna give you a little bit of a leeway and I'm gonna check um, IXL basically at the end of the day um, during cohort B, but I'm hoping that you guys really take the time to just complete it during cohort B and then move on, okay? All right. Go ahead in your planner, find February 8th and write down um, that your assignment is to read all the way up to line 770. Okay, so I want you guys to organize yourself right now so that everybody's good to go. Okay, we're writing things down. And then February 16th. So if you guys look at your planners, February 15th is a Monday. That's President's Weekend, so there's a, you know, holiday on Monday. So we're going to meet on February 16th for our final week for Antigone, and that you're going to read to the end. Okay, so we're going to take about three weeks to read Antigone. Um, this is kind of like an abbreviated version of Antigone, um, more simplified version, just because, um, you know, we're in different circumstances this year. So um, I had to choose something that was already online. Okay, everybody good? Okay. Anybody need more time? We're good, can move on. Malia, you good? Or you need more time? Good, okay. All right, the next thing we're going to do, okay. Oh, can you guys do me a big favor? and Just double check, can you click on the PDF? Does it work? Okay, good. Okay, Malia, does it work? Okay. For some kids, it's blocked for some reason. I have no idea why. McKenna, it works for you. Okay, good. Tehani, Kamakani, okay, can. Yeah, all right. Okay, just double checking on that. All right, next, um, we should have done the introduction to Antigone. Okay, and then we have this gimme gimme. All right, before we start today, we're gonna take kind of a mental break right now. Um, we are going to be reading the beginning today um, and tomorrow. We're gonna be playing this little game, I guess you could call it. It's a scavenger hunt. So this is called Gimme Gimme, all right? You guys are going to find three items in your house. I believe everybody's in their house today. So what we're gonna do is you need to find something that represents loyalty, your family, and then something that doesn't work well. Okay, so as well as it should. If you guys look at my screen, I'm gonna show you, these are my three things that I've selected. Everybody can see, correct? Now, I'm just gonna explain why I chose this, all right? So this is the um, 
the can opener I had before, I threw it away, but I wanted to show you that I had a can opener that didn't work as well as it should. If you guys know, can relate anything to when can openers don't work well, it's horrors. Like no matter how hard you squeeze it, it just doesn't move, hurts your hand, right? So that's something that doesn't work well. This is um, my teacher ID. It's dirty. I need to get a new one. Anyway, um, what we have here is this is my um, item that represents loyalty. Okay. Um, I think we all cross paths for a reason. Um, my loyalty is to this school and to my students that um, I have a deep aloha for. Okay. So that's the loyalty. Now, this. Does anybody like spicy food? Yeah, okay. So this represents my family. I know it's kind of weird, like, but on a metaphoric level, we're all kind of like spunky and feisty. Um, and so that's why the crushed red peppers, but also um, we love crushed red peppers. And so we really love each other to death. And so that's why I have these three items. Okay. I'm going to have you guys take about two, maybe three minutes to go find those three items. Ready? Go. Now. Sorry, can you repeat the um, items? Oh, here, 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 here. Let me bring this down. It's right here. Okay, so something that represents loyalty, family, and then something that doesn't work as well as it should. Okay, go for it.
Okay. Go ahead and just bring your th three items up to your cameras. Just, just a quick show. Oh, hey. Oh, that's so cute. Okay. Oh my goodness. Nice. Is that bananagrams? <laughs> nice. Okay. So go ahead and put those down. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to take a picture and upload them to your discussion board. Okay. Um, I think we can do that later, but for now, at least you have the three things. Okay. You're going to upload that. And then after you're, we're done uploading, you got, we're going to go ahead and read Antigone. So you know what? We do have some time. So why don't we do that now? Go ahead and take a picture and just upload the, the picture. You're going to have, um, you're going to be able to go back and edit. And that's when you're going to add in your connections to Antigone. Okay. Okay. So go ahead, get on, take a picture and then upload it. Okay, how's it going? It's uploading. How are we doing? Are we done? Tani, how, how, how's it going? Did you finish uploading? Malie? No? Okay. All right. So just make sure you do that today. Okay. Because it's going to take you some time to read Antigone. Okay, and then once you're done reading that section of Antigone up to line 330, then you're going to go back and make those connections. Oh, this represents loyalty. Well, in Antigone, blah, 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 blah. Online, da, 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 da. All right. We want to hear the specific line and reference number for the lines. Okay. All right. So go ahead. We're going to play cahoots. We are, we are going to be playing cahoot. I'm going to give extra credit points for kids um, who are top three. So I guess I have to share my screen so you can get the code. Did everybody get on cahoot? All right. And we also have some amazing music. All right. Extra credit for the dancers in the house. Just joking. <laughs> Capitalize your name. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uno mas. Okay. You ready?
Oh gosh, <clears throat> my last class, somebody chose Shakespeare. Just saying, mahalo you guys. What is Oedipus Rex? That was the what? The false ruler. Oh, kind of. The Oedipus Rex is the, is the story before Antigone, right? And Oedipus is the story of the prophecy of Oedipus, okay? Hey. Okay. So what we have here is we have Eteocles and Ismini. That's not correct. Right, there were the two brothers that fought um, for the throne. And this happens right before the start of Antigone. And what's important about this is that you guys need to know that Eteocles and his brother's name is Polynesis, right? They were given the throne from their father, Oedipus. Okay, now what happened as a result of that? They had to take turns. Every other year, one brother would get to sit on the throne. As you guys know, siblings can't even figure out who gets the front seat when you have to take turns. So what makes anybody think that splitting the throne every other year would work out, right? I mean, let's be real here. Oh boy. <laughs> What's the name of the egg? What is, do you guys know? Chaos. Yes, chaos. You gotta move, move the things around, right? What is the order? So I'll give you a, you gotta put the, the golden, the golden egg at the top first. Okay, so that comes first and then the rest should be pretty straightforward. So obviously the whole thing is the golden egg, right? Chaos. And then we have Uranus, right? The sky, Gaia, the earth, and then Tartarus, right? The sunless region beneath the earth. Mm. Um, somebody chose hobbits. Yes. I clicked submit right when there's no time. Oh, it's okay. It's just a game. So we have the Cyclops. Oh, <coughs> and they are the one eyed giants. And then we have Hectonctures, right? The giants with the 100 hands and one and 
five, 50 heads. I think for some of us, that's our moms. They're just like always doing stuff, right? So we have these two um, types of monsters that Gaia and Uranus uh, created and that upset Uranus to its fullest, right? Uakea is on fire. Look at that. Shall we sing? Just joking. Gosh. So we had a sec that they both had a second set of children who were perfect straight from the slides. Oh, look, it says Ua Kea has four correct answers in a row. My Kaino. Thank you. Right. It should be Cronus marries his sister Rhea and eats their children. Bradaman went on a buffet eating rampage, right? So and ate. His children. Does anybody remember why? Why does he eat his children? Malia? Because he was scared that they were going to fight him. Right. Like super paranoid, right? Okay. It's kind of an interesting thing. It's like, you know, you do something that's kind of sketchy and then you, you know, people get um, a little paranoid that other people are going to do it back to them. And you're like, oh, giving it away, aren't we? Look at this. Oh, Uake okay, is walking away. Somebody trip her. Ooh. How's this dramatic music, guys? Why do we have to wait till the whole thing's done? Ooh. Okay, so remember Rhea feeds Cronus a stone, right? In the meantime, she sends Zeus away to be raised by the nymphs. Then Zeus grows up, comes back, right? And then Cronus becomes um, Zeus. Sorry, Zeus becomes Cronus's cup bearer, right? Um, for good reason, right? And so he gives him a potion, and then he barfs out his kids, right? And then those kids that were barfed out join six other kids and become the um, Olympians, right? And so there's the rule with Zeus and the twelve Olympians. Ooh. Ooh. Very good. Um, Kamakani, who actually rules the underworld? You don't know? Anybody know? Hades. Hades, thank you. What are you eating? Children? Just joking. <laughs> Cookie. Cookie. Okay. Are they, are they gingerbread cook? Just okay. Chocolate. Chocolate. Mm.
Oh, not lakes, rivers, right? River sticks, right? We've got some rivers going on. Oh, oh, Tehani, don't call it a comeback. LL Cool J, look it up. Old school rap. Okay, so we've seen movies like this, right? Where like the king dies and they are going to set the boat on fire. But before that, what happens? They put like these gold coins on the, on, on the person that dies, they put them on their eyes, right? And then they push the boat into the ocean and then light it on fire, right? So it's just kind of that thing, right? The obelisk is that gold coin, right? Kind of like an offering, right? For safe passage across the river. Ooh, Lele's coming. What Uakea? Oh my goodness. Somebody chose Creon. Who is Creon? Anybody know? This is father. Well, mm -hmm. uh, Creon in Antigone, in the story of Antigone, is He's their uncle. Yeah. So we have Ismini, who is the sister, Etiocles and Polynesis, who are the two brothers, right, that fight for the throne. Oh, hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo. look, by like, what, 22 points. Oh, boy. So anybody know who Haman is? Haman, Yaman, who is Haman? Antigone's fiance. Hey, right, Mon, right. That is, oh my gosh. We've hit an all time cheesy level here. All right, so we have Haman's fiance is Antigone, vice versa. Okay, so Isminia also is the sister and then we have Jocastus and Oedipus who are the parents. Also, jo Jocastus is Oedipus's mother. All righty. Oh, darn it. I told you guys the answer. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm not sure what to say. About. I just told you Oedipus marries his mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are so good at listening. I love it. Yeah. Okay, last one. More than one answer. So straight from the slides, right? It, you have to be properly bur buried, all right? And so if you're not buried, right, it's an insult to human dignity. And if you're not properly buried, you're doomed to wander. 
around. Okay, who won? Oh! Oh! And? Oh! <laughs> Oh man. Oh look at those runners runner ups. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. So we're gonna just stop stop this music. Just stop it. Yeah, stop. Okay. Mahalo for playing. So let's go ahead and um we need to create our notes. So let's go ahead and do that. Um I want you guys to do this. Let me show you. Okay, don't judge me. Okay, just make the notes. Okay, it should look like this. So just write Antigone lines one to 330. Okay, and then I want you guys to basically draw main idea. First one is A for Antigone. The details will go on the right hand side. Is Minnie looks like that because she is the weak sister. She likes to follow the rules. Will I be asking for your notes later? Yes. Okay, so make sure you guys take good notes. Then we have these two, the two brothers, right? Polynesius and Eteocles um, putting up their dukes, right? So. We're just going to get started with those notes and then we're going to read. Okay, you guys ready? Dale, you good? All right. So I'm going to stop the share. Okay, we're good to go? Yes, Malie. Are we able to like annotate? Yeah. So. It's a lot of pages to print out, but if you have an iPad and an Apple pen, you can do it. You can also just annotate on your notebook, right? In your notebook, so that's fine too. What, I'm, what I did was I gave you some guided notes via stick figures. Okay, so I want you guys to use those symbols and things like that to help you. So that's why Ismini is like looking like she's stressed out, okay? Can. All right, so I've selected the roles for you guys. You guys ready? Um, as you guys can see, uh, Antigone is a play. And so today we have selected roles to choose from. Well, I've chosen, okay? And not all of you guys will read today, but that's okay, we'll have time. So <clears throat> today, I don't know how far we're going to get because we might not all be able to read anyway. Um, we're going to have Ua Kea as Antigone. Mahalo nui. Okay, so you might have to write that down and then just kind of look to see where you're reading. Next, we have McKenna as is Minnie. So you two are sisters today. One's a little more bossier than the other one. And the other one is kind of like a goody two-shoe. So that's good. The chorus, which is usually made up of, um, out of a number of people, right? A group of people, right? Is going to be played by Kamakani. So Kamakani, you have to use your, your voice as the chorus, right? Um, and usually the chorus provides like a backstory. Okay, so as I'm talking to you guys, you should be taking notes, right? That you should be plugging in. Antigone is the lead, right? Um, Ismini is kind of the weak, but moral sister. Okay, they're both moral actually. Okay, and then we have the Chorogus, which is part of the chorus. However, they represent more of the elders. And so Kaike, you are going to be the Chorogus. Hopefully we get there. And then Creon will be played by, um, actually, sorry, I got that wrong. Um, yeah, Lele, you are the Corgus. Okay, so we need you to be a tutu lady. Um, and then Creon's gonna be played by Kaike. 
right? Creon is the basically like the uncle daddy of right um, Antigone and Ismini and so on. Creon is now the new ruler of Thebes. Okay, and then this sentry. Okay, so go ahead and write that down. Sentry is basically like a soldier, like a kia -i. And that's going to be played by the all-powerful Malie. Okay. All right. So we're just going to read a little bit, and then I'm just going to guide you through this. Okay. Um, so are we ready to go? Everybody have the PDF up and running? So I'm going to actually, because, um, Tehani, you don't have um, a part today. And who knows how long we're going to read for, but you can read the scene, you know, right above the prologue, we have like the scene before the Palace of Creon. Okay, so you can read that part, and then we'll get started with um, Uakea Antig Antigone. Okay. Before the place of Creon, king of Thebes, a central double door and two lateral doors, a platform extends the length of the facade. facade. And from this platform, three steps lead down into the orchestra or chorus ground. Time, dawn of the day after the repulse of Argive, the Argive army from the assault on Thebes. Okay, very good. Antigone and Ismini enter from the central door of the palace. Okay. Does it work? Something's wrong with my Wi-Fi. What is Wait. your something's wrong with your Wi-Fi? Yeah, it's like seeking oh wait. Oh. Okay. Do you need to okay. be tagged no. in or you got it? You got this girl? Okay. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Is, oh gosh. Is many. Is many, dear sister, you would think that we had already suffered enough for the cursa on Oedipus. Oedipus, not Oedipus. Okay, not Oedipus. Oedipus. I cannot imagine any grief that you and I have not gone through. And now, have they told you of the new degree of our King Creon? I have heard nothing, I know, that two sisters lost two brothers a double death. In a single hour, and I know the Argive army fled in the night, but beyond this, nothing. I thought so, and that is why I wanted you to come out here with me. There is something we must do. Why do you speak so strangely? Listen, is many. No, no, brother... no, 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 no. Listen, as many. Creon yes. buried, yeah, you gotta go, go for it. How do you say it? Etiochus. Etiochus. Creon buried our brother Etiochus with military honors, gave him a soldier's funeral, and it was right that he should. But Paul. Polynesis. Polynesis. They fought as bravely and died as miserably. They say that Creon has sworn no one shall bury him. No one mourned for him, but this body must lie in the fields, a sweet treasure for carry-on birds, as birds to find as they search for food. This is what they say, and our good Creon is coming here to announce it publicly, and the penalty, stoning to death. Skip that, the I, public square. The public squirrel. Yeah. There it is. And now you can prove what you are, a true sister or a traitor to your family. Ooh. Antigone, you are mad. What could I possibly do? You must decide whether you will help me or not. I do not understand you. Help you in what? Ismeni, I'm going to bury him. Will you come? Sorry. <laughs> bury him? You have just said the new law forbids it. He's my brother, and he is your brother too. But think of the danger. Think what Creon will do. Creon is not enough to stand in my way. Okay, stop right here. I'm gonna, now we're gonna take some notes because we need to get this straight before we move on. Okay, you guys ready? 
So first of all, Antigone, okay, let's go ahead, find your stick man for Antigone. Okay, so Antigone um, wants to bury poor thing Polynesis. And that's how you're gonna remember Polynesis. Okay, so you see the, the stick figures with Polynesis and Eteocles um, putting up their dukes, right? Um, P for poor thing Polynesis. Poor thing Polynesis um, was exiled. Okay, so you might have to take notes on this. Um, exiled and sent away from Thebes. Why? Eteocles wanted the throne. And remember, that was the agreement. They were supposed to sw swap every year, right? Eteocles is king, then Polynesis. Flip-flop. However, one got a little greedy, right? And so Polynesis um, joined up with the Argive army and brought them over to Thebes to try and regain his seat. Obviously that didn't work well because both brothers killed, were killed at the same time, right? They killed each other, Ugh, right? So that's the, the start of Antigone, right? Now, because Ethiocles was in power, right? Was on the throne, he gets to be buried, right? An honorable death. So everybody write that down. Ethiocles, right? On the throne, he gets an honorable death. However, we're gonna name Polynesis, poor thing Polynesis, because he um, has been ordered no burial by King Creon. He gets a dishonorable death in meaning he's going to rot until uh, the ravens and the birds start eating away at him. Okay. And then what, what does, what is Antigone planning on doing? What does she plan to do? Malia, what is? I am not sure. Okay. Or was um, Ismene going to bury him? Um, Ismene says no way. Antigone is going to what, Tehani? Give him a proper burial. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's what's going to happen, right? So if you look at line, I think it looks like line 25, right? She's talking, Antigone's talking to Ismene, saying, true sister or traitor to your family, right? You going to do this with me or are you going to just let our brother rot, right? And as many is saying, Antigone, are you mad? What could I possibly do, right? And then Antigone is like, you must decide whether you will help me or not, right? And na 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 na, right? No one is to touch him, right? Antigone says to as many, I'm going to bury him. Will you come, right? You weakling, basically, right? And then as many says, bury him. You have just said the new law forbids it right and antigone says that's my brother we got to do this right that's our brother okay so that's where we are everybody good everybody understand what's going on okay we're going to read just a little bit more is minnie at the very bottom of this page right here oh sister um class is over oh is it yeah oh by six minutes Am I right? Wow, the time. Okay, you guys have about 315 more lines to read. As you, as you notice, it's really short because it doesn't go the whole width of the page, okay? Enjoy, take notes as you go through, okay? I just enjoy being with you guys for so long that it's like, um. anyway. All right, email me. Don't forget to do IXL. Take care. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's gonna That's happen. okay. I would have been like, we should have been going all the way to three o'clock if not. Okay. Yeah, because I have a Hawaiian test. That's why I was like, I better hurry. <laughs> okay, and you got to go bathroom. Okay, bye. Bye.